At the moment, I'm doing a 30-day challenge for A-level physics students in year 13. And the question I asked on day one was about the value of big G and its units. Now, some students have actually emailed me their answers, and it's amazing to see the working out they've done to actually come up with the units, which I think is a really important skill. I mean, in the exam, you will be given the value for big G, you will be given the units, but I think the skill of actually working out maybe the base units or working out units from an equation is super important. Uh, and so I've had some amazing answers here from different students who've emailed these in. Now, you don't have to email me in your answers. I don't want to have a thousand people emailing me their stuff every day because it's just too much to see. But I think it's really interesting to see the different approaches which get to the same answer. Now, I do have short videos that I'm putting up on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube Shorts, but I just thought I'd go through an in-depth explanation of this. So first of all, big G, it's got the number 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Now that's a constant which is found out experimentally, and therefore I think really it's only known to about four or five significant figures. Now in terms of units, how can you work this out? Well, let's go back to an equation where we have big G in it. Uh, this is from Newton's law of gravitation that says F is equal to G M M divided by R squared. Okay, so this is an equation we're gonna use. And if we rearrange this to make G the subject, we can say that G is equal to F R squared over M M. So now, if we think about the units for each of these terms, we can use that to write a value of G. So I'm just gonna to go to a different color for my units. Force is measured in Newtons. Uh, the distance R is going to be measured in meters. So R squared is going to be meters squared. And then we've got um, kilograms times kilograms. So that's going to be kilograms to the minus two. And so that's often the standard way of actually giving the units for big G. Now the second way we can do it is actually looking at its base units. Now if it's base units, we're going to be expressing things solely in terms of amps, meters, kilograms, seconds, and I guess we also have like moles, candela, and um, whatever the other one is, uh, Kelvin. Okay, so we can see that these are in base units, but what about the Newton? Well, a Newton is a measure of force. Uh, force, I guess we can express as mass times acceleration. So another way of writing Newtons is it would be its mass, kilograms times acceleration meters per second to the minus two. And so we're going to multiply this by meters squared and then by kilograms to the minus two. So that would be kilograms to the minus one. We've got meters times meters squared, so that's going to be meters cubed. And then we've got seconds to the minus two. Uh, so we can also express it as kilograms to the minus one, meters cubed, second to the minus two. Um, in terms of the order, I don't think there's a particular order it has to be in, but I think that that's, um, you know, that's the right kind of base units. So it's either going to be this, or it's going to be this as a way to express the units for big G. Now for the other one, uh, little g, this is uh, much more standard. Um, now the value on the surface of the Earth is equal to 9.81. Now the units, because it's a gravitational field strength, should really be expressed in newtons per kilogram. Because if you think about what we define gravitational field strength as, it's going to be the force per unit mass. Now it also happens to be that uh, if you've got something which is accelerating by free fall on Earth, then G is also equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. Um, and therefore you can also, I guess, see that a Newton per kilogram is the same as a meter per second squared. But I guess this is really the base units for that value of G. Okay, so I've gone into a bit of detail there. Uh, let me just show you what some of the students have put. So uh, this student here, they've got a value for uh, little g as 9.81. Um, when it comes to an expression for finding G, they've rearranged fr squared over mm, which is, I think, what I did uh, just previously in the video. You can see they've kind of cancelled here to get meters cubed, kilogram to the one, second to the minus two. And then what they've actually done really nicely here is at the end, they've written their final answer and they've kind of just put a box around it. So it's really clear to see the final answer that they've quoted. Um, this student here, uh, they started with little g is equal to gm over r squared which is another equation we can use. They've rearranged then to say that G is equal to GR squared over M, uh, and that's going to be Newtons per kilogram times meters squared over kilograms, which is Newtons kilogram to the minus two meters uh, squared. Um, this student here, 
It's maybe a bit harder to see on the kind of printout, but again, they've gone through the process. They've kind of written out clearly how they're doing things. Um, and it's again, quite nice to see at the end, the value of G is equal to kilogram to the minus one meters cubed second to the minus two. So you can see that there are a whole different range of approaches. Um, and again, this student here, again, the printout's probably not the best. It's, it's a lot easier to see on my screen. Um, but again, they've got uh, Newton's meter squared kilograms to the minus two um, kind of laid out really nicely. So even though it was a simple question, even though you will be given the value of G in your data book, the reason I asked this was because I think it just kind of really builds your core skills as well as giving you the kind of familiarity with one of these constants you're going to be using all the time. In year 13, you will be given the constants you need for any questions that you're given in the real exam. But if you know that G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, it just speeds up your approach to answering questions and then you can just have a quick double check in your data book. Anyway, uh, that was kind of like the longer form video. I've got shorter videos each day where I go through the answers. Um, if you do want to sign up for this 30 day November challenge, which I'm doing in November 2025, there's a link uh, that's beneath this video. You can go up there, sign up and you get a new email sent to you every single day with a question. And then the next day I'll reveal the answer. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Obviously don't forget to like and subscribe.